Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery gush for Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you have not read this book, I will link my spoiler free review for it on the screen. So I'm so glad I'm doing a discussion on this because um, I couldn't talk about anything in the actual review and that sucks because it's just kind of like, yeah, most of this is very confusing. So um, as soon as we jumped in and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Um, I was confused through, like I said, 80, 75 to 80% of this book. Uh, I think, again, that's very much intentional. But when we were like kind of jumping back and forth and it's like, she's go jumping back to like the stuff that happened in Gideon. And I just was like, that, that didn't happen. And so I started very quickly to kind of be like, okay, so either like she's completely had a mental break because she keeps saying that she's crazy or she did something to her brain because I was like, she wrote these letters, she must have done something to her brain, but like what, why, what is happening? And I hadn't recently read Gideon, so I just went and read a synopsis, like a recap. So I was like, did I, did I forget things? Like, cause I read it this time last year. Um, so I was like, what is happening? So, but I was just like, you know what? I'm in it for the ride and we're gonna go for it. Um, so when things really started picking up was at that like 75% mark, I will say even before that, what I enjoyed of like the convoluted stuff um, was the dynamic between the Emperor John uh, and the rest of like the electors or like the priests or whatever. Um, they had just like a, the fact that like it, it reminds me a little bit of if you've ever worked in a hospital, which I'm sure most people have not, but when doctors <laughs> refer to each other by their first names, um, it gives me similar energy because uh, I'm just kind of like that's Dr. So-and-so. Like, you know, like it's just, it, it's that kind of thing. And it's felt very similar to like have these gods and saints and stuff sort of like, or hands or whatever they call each other, um, talking to each other with like, like their little interpersonal petty bullshit because it does remind you that like these were humans. Um, so I thought their dynamics were really interesting. I liked in the flashbacks that we got more of like um, Ortis. Um, and so like he becomes a more fully fledged character, which by the end like makes a lot of sense and was like, oh. And then the fact that we got more of Abigail Pent. What a waste that we didn't get more of her in book one, which I'm glad that we got her in this book through this like fake flashback. Um, just interesting. It was just funny how like it was so different in the flashback um, that it was, you know, like it, ch it changed so much, which, which was the point. That was, that was part of the point. But so many cool things happen in here. So what it really started to pick up was when she goes and she sees, um, was it the sixth sex, Sextus or Palamedes? Is that his name? He was a character that in book one, I was devastated that he died. I loved him and he exploded, but he's not actually dead. Uh, he's like, you know, he's holding on in the, in the river and I'm like, what the fact that like there's so many characters in here that died that really didn't die it just it's over the top and I think some people might not like that um, and I typically don't like Brit doing too much resurrection stuff but this is done in a way that I'm like it's clever though and so I'm like so no one can like really die like you know the emperor came back I don't know if Augustine's gonna come back out of whatever hole he got sucked into um, but a lot of these characters that we thought were like dead maybe not. So I, I like what that presents and I really liked him. So I hope they do get him out of wherever he is. Uh, as soon as that happened, I was like, first big reveal that I was, I'm here for it. Um, and I also knew that like, since this, oh, I didn't mention that in my review. Since this is written in a lot of ways in, um, well, not a lot of ways. I mean, it's, it's written in second person mostly. I knew that had to be Gideon talking to Harrow. Uh, but I was also like, when is Gideon gonna make an appearance? So yeah, so when like Gideon finally like came out, it sort of revealed that um, Harrow did this to sort of like keep Gideon alive. So that's the thing is like, Gideon's like, you did this because you didn't want to like give up any of your power. And I'm like, Gideon, <laughs> she did this because she loves you um, and she didn't want you to like fully die. And she's trying to keep herself from like sucking your soul and using it as a battery. Um, so, but when like Gideon comes out, I was like, fuck yeah. Um, and all, so many reveals happen at that point. I mean, we get to see Harrow in the river with, with a bunch of the Cavaliers and the Necromancers, which again, like you have Abigail Pent, she was much more of a factor in here. She's in here. They don't mention the teens, but like the teens are alive and they like are trying to get them like in, into a better situation. You have Camilla and this like other sort of group uh, and you have this whole like sleeper, which I still am a little confused by the sleeper, honestly. Like obviously like she drew the sleeper on accident um, because of everything, but I wasn't completely like sure who that was. Um, it said that like the sleeper showed up when she did see Camilla in like the real world. Um, so 
who was that exactly? Um, if you guys remember or like understand that part, let me know. That was the one part I was like truly confused when the plot started to fully come together. And then we have all these reveals about Gideon that like Gideon is the emperor's child and that's what the eyes are all about. And um, with this other, uh, with Electo, um, who is the title of now the fourth book, but used to be the third. Um, and Electo is now like a revenant that can go around like possessing the bodies. Um, finding out that Harold never got into the tomb actually, but is Electo the one that's then... Electo's the one that's actually in the tomb? Like, there's... So, so is Harrow actually in love with, like, Gideon's dead mom? But not really, <laughs> because Harrow never actually got in the tomb. So much. And then, like, Gideon being accidentally named after one of the lectors who keeps trying to kill Harrow. Like, there's just so... There's so many things, and I'm just like... What? A truly wild ride. I know I'm just mostly mentioning like all of the weird shit that happened, but I deeply enjoyed it. The weird threesome that happened between all of the like undying, you know, sort of people and then being like, that's how we that one time got your stuff so that we could make this Gideon person. Uh, it, like what? <laughs> it's just like so wild. So I appreciate this series for like the absolute ridiculousness and just eccentric nature of it. Um, while still being like very high level and complex and like all the bone stuff, all the aesthetics, all the like lesbianism, rampant, um, just women loving women, I just dig it. Um, but yeah, Harold being an unreliable narrator in here was wild. Um, I've really never read a lot of books that have like a truly unreliable narrator in this way. Um, so that was interesting. And I just, I just deeply enjoyed it. I like what it set up and like, now what? Uh, because we now have this reveal you can save your cavalier you don't need to do that like that isn't that isn't what you need to do so it's like are we gonna have Gideon be alive again but where did Gideon's body go I don't even know do we get rid of that I don't know they summoned a saint like a former saint well is he a saint technically like a, the cavalier Mat Matthias or whatever they just summoned him but not even really him more like the idea of him to fight the sleeper what like just it's so good. Um, I get that this is sort of like a fan cult favorite at this point, but like I totally understand why. I really dig it. But again, I know why some people will be like, this is garbage to me. Like you're either on board for the wacky bone shit and just complete off the rails storytelling or you're not. That's fine. <sighs> Either is fine. So yeah, I really dig this. I'm sure I'm forgetting things, so feel free to talk to me in the comments about like all of the weird shit that happened in this and set up for the rest of the series. Um, excited for Nona and Electo, although we don't know like who is Nona. We have not had a, had a mention of Nona, at least we had a mention of Electo, because while I was reading this, I was like, who the fuck is Electo? Because at least with Harrow, we like already knew who Harrow was. Um, so now it's like, who is Nona? I don't know, but excited for the rest of the series. Glad we get two more books. So comment below, let me know your thoughts on Hero the Ninth. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.